game was not scoring enough goals. Um, I think he, if he can add, a, to me, he should be a, a 10 to 15 goal a season man. He's playing in that mid, advanced midfield position, almost a number 10, really. And he, he's got the ability to do it with, with both feet, great feet. He's an athlete, as he said. I think he looks fitter there than I, I've seen him for a while. But, yeah, he should, he should be contributing, contributing more goals to the team. He's more than capable of it. And I, I love that goal. I thought it was a great goal, great header, great, great ball from Grealish. And, you know, sometimes you need to put pace onto, ball, onto the ball to, to score. He didn't have to do that. It was just a nice little firm punch with a head and it was a, it was a lovely finish. Mm. That speaks a man who knows, Tony. Um, he's one of four or five new recruits this season. They look a completely different team to the one that survived on the final day of last season. Absolutely. And Dean was under huge pressure at the end of last season. And I think lockdown really worked for him because they just went really defensive, Dean, and he put a, a, a good foundation. Because the crowd wasn't in the stadiums, he was able to do that. And they got the results on the back of that and stayed in the division. And from there, he's built a very good unit. And with Grealish, he's got a, a super player that you know he's, he's an amazing asset to you, you know you know as a defender if I'm kind of going to keep a clean sheet and get my you know my life to stop that ball from going out you know in, in my net I've got someone like that up the other end we had a Ian Wright back in the day Thierry Henry give them the ball they're match winners great players to have in your squad mm. you mentioned Jack Grealish they have a good relationship don't they Grealish and Barkley on and off the pitch we've seen that since he's gone to Villa. Yeah, but I think Ollie Watkins has a great relationship with him as well. You know, I think Luis and McGinn in behind, I think they're a great partnership. I think Target works well with, with Jack Grealish. I just think the manager deserves a lot of praise for the way this team has been put together. You know, with the goalkeeper, the defence, the midfield. I actually look at the team and I don't think they have a weakness. Last year, they, the goalkeeper was, was weak. The back, the back four was an issue. Bouncing midfield wasn't right and they couldn't score goals. All of a sudden now, They've addressed all those issues and they almost don't have a, a weakness. So I wouldn't be surprised if they climbed up the table, Villa. OK, two big things to look at VAR-wise. Uh, let's look at, first of all, Southampton thought in the last couple of minutes they had equalised only for it to be ruled out. If you're the attacking team, you're going to be frustrated here. Yeah, you've got to be really disappointed with that. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure what the keeper's doing in the first place. I think it's, it's a simple stand-up and tip it over. It's like a little bit of a save for the cameras, but... Uh, as we'll see in a minute, it's it's really really tight. How how we can give that, I don't know. In the first place, um, so what 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 we're saying is shoulders his shoulders offside, so he can score with his shoulder. It's so tight, it's virtually impossible to tell. But look, they've given it and and you move on. But the the, the keeper was disappointed for me. I don't think the situation needed to go that far. If it's just a simple tip over and it's done, but Southampton a little bit unlucky. As a defender, it's offside's offside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, well played. I can't tell if he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whatever part of the yeah. body it is, you, you're holding the line. I think it was Cash there that was trying to hold the line, and uh, it's offside, it's offside. It's clear cut for me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely clear cut. I is don't, it? You know, he's it's got it on the, on the shirt sleeve there, and, uh, you know, he. The, the lines are there, and as far as I'm concerned, any defender is, is offside. Is there a slight different mentality about modern-day defenders with that tool they know that's coming, that line? I would definitely be blind to it, Steve. You would know, you? I don't think enough teams do, to be honest with you. I'd be, I'd be shifting up like Beresi did back in my day, fantastic <laughs> AC Milan player. He kept on jumping in front of the forwards, you know, to get them offside, you know, and not enough teams for me use the VAR system, you know, if you're going to catch them by their shirt sleeve, you know, I'd be all day long trying to get in front of them and catch them offside. Sympathy for Villa or uh, for Southampton or is, are you clear cut with Tony there? Yeah, a bit of sympathy because I probably thought the performance warranted, a, you know, a, a point in the game. I thought they played pretty well, I thought they had some good moments in the game, but, you know, the margins are fine, you know, and if the boys are going to step up, Villa have defended really well in the game and the margins are fine, we've seen that in the Premier League and, you know, I think with VAR it swings swings in roundabouts, you know, one week it goes away, the next it doesn't. But uh, I thought Southampton, the way they played, they probably deserved a point in the game. On another day at 0-0, could they have had a penalty in the first half with a different referee? <laughs> yeah, they could have with a different camera angle, they might have had a, <laughs> they, they might have had a penalty. Great bit of skill from Ings in, in the first place. Look, his hand is up there, does it take a, a nick off his thigh? I don't think the pitchers are, are conclusive with that. I, I, I thought at the time... It, I thought it probably did, but probably is not good enough, is it? Well, they've got to be 100% certain to yeah. give it, I suppose. So. Yeah. 
Steve, but, this one for me is a penalty. Really? To be honest with you. Yeah, you can take you, it 100%, Tony. Yeah? If you're a goalkeeper, you kind of spread yourself. You know, if you're a defender, you're taught to get your arms in and you're putting your legs but if it up. If it clips his thigh, they're deeming it uh, not I, deliberate. For me, if I'm teaching defenders right. how to defend, you keep your arms in, you're, you're stopping the ball with your legs. You're stopping your ball, you're putting your legs up and trying to stop it. You know, if you're a goalkeeper, yeah, you get your hands up, you know, to stop the ball. Make yourself as big as possible. If you're a defender, you're using your legs. You're using your legs, well, you're keeping your arms there, though, isn't in. It? He's gone for the ball. He's kind of... It's handball for me. There you go. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, do you know what? You wouldn't have been surprised if he gave it. Of course you wouldn't, but I just think... I think, I don't know, <laughs> it looks like there's a tiny nick of his thigh which would excuse him. Which is what we heard from Dermot at half-time. The VAR interpretation was, and therefore it wasn't deliberate. Yeah, I, th I think the ball changes its angle. I know what Tony's saying, his arm's kind of there and it looks like... But it actually comes off his thigh. I think it comes off his thigh first. And Scholes is right, it's not conclusive, we can't guarantee, because the pictures, remarkably, with all the cameras we have, they're not conclusive. But I think from this angle, you can see it almost changes position there and then it hits his arm off his thigh. So, and I think as a player, if it deflects off my thigh, then I'm not really trying to play it with my hand. My hand's just in a position where, where you're almost in balance. <laughs> um, so I think we can all agree to disagree. <laughs> We've got no idea. Really really no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> well, he said what I, th what I thought. I thought it what did come off his thigh, but... Um, I don't think he was 100% convinced either, was he? So you just sometimes you got to take it. When it goes your way, you're delighted. Tony, he did make an interesting point there about defenders yeah, trying yeah. to ha have their arms. I can understand them. with the balance. You know, he's got an argument. Yeah, never a penalty. <laughs> 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 no, listen, jokes aside, you know, he's a super player. We've, we're spoiled in this country for right backs, and I think he's got a massive future. This kid, you know, he really does defend well. You know, I've seen him, against, especially at Arsenal against a Bang Yang recently. I'd watched him, and he was exceptional. I think he's got a big future in the game. Mm. And defensively, Villa are getting better and better, aren't they? Yeah, they are, and they had to be today. Um, Southampton give it a real go, especially that second half, and some really good creative players, Southampton. Well, Walcott, as we know, he went off injured in the end, but Ings and Armstrong's a really good footballer, Redmond. And they defended, they threw themselves at everything, really. Blocks, blocks on the line, there was tackles, there was sprinting back, they were cutting crosses out. And, you know, that builds a big platform, as Tony said before. If you can defend like that, and you've got players like Jack Grealish, Grealish on the pitch, you've always got chances of winning games and it, it, proved, it proved that way today. And you mentioned John Terry, Tony, that they've got real organisation about them from yeah, the back you've seen, seen everything, you know, people throwing themselves in there, it's catch again, stopping it, you know, uh, uh, Kenza, uh, Mings, all of them, you know, they're, they're all young as well and they're all, they're all... I think John's having a big influence on them. I, I'm not sure, you know, I know Dean's a, a central defender as well in his day, so... I think they've got a good group of young players there that are working hard and keeping the ball out the back of the net. There's a lot to be admired there. They were shipping goals last season. They conceded 67, stayed up on the final day by a single point. Past halfway, just 21 this season. Absolutely. It's a long way off our 24 clean sheets at the Arsenal. But... Hey! <laughs> <laughs> I had to get out of here. You did. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still not bad. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as you can see there, um, in terms of uh, fewer goals, only City and Spurs and Arsenal, as you were pointing earlier on. But look at the company they're keeping. You know, they're, they're the top teams in the division. You know, defensively, for a team that almost got relegated, to be in that position there, I think the goalkeeper deserves a lot of credit. But I think defensively, Konza, Cash, Mings gets all the headlines, obviously, playing in the England team. I think Cash and Konza could sneak in eventually. I think they're, they're playing that well. I thought targets were improving as well, playing at left back. The two midfield players in front, Luis and McGinn, I think, didn't get through a ton of work. But everything, everybody goes on about Watkins and Grealish in Barkley. But I think the whole balance of the team is, is, is top. Is there a point here as well, Paul, where there's a lot of discussion about rest and rotation in the Premier League? And yes, this is a crazy season. That this club has made fewer changes than anybody else, particularly defensively. Yes, great point. Um, I, I, that has to be a benefit, playing the same team every week. It has to be. You know, you've seen other teams swapping, changing. Yeah, I used Man United as an example the other night against Sheffield United. Leave four or five players out, and they're nowhere near the same team. Now Aston Villa probably don't. Well, they don't have the squad of Manchester United, and they can't really afford to leave players out. But when this team are playing together all the time, if he keeps this this 11, 12 players fit, 
he's going to do really well as he's done, and you know he's built this team. He's he's done a fantastic job, um, and hopefully he keeps it going because I, I really like what they're doing. Okay, yeah, great. Yes, another assist for Jack Grealish tonight. Ross Barkley's goal, the difference at the end of Saturday's action that began with a huge win for Steve Bruce and Newcastle United, 2-0 away at Everton. Uh, Palace beating Wolves by a goal to nil. City against Sheffield United by the same scoreline. Big game at the bottom ended 2-2 uh, at the Hawthorns between West Brom and Fulham. No goals at the Emirates between Arsenal and Manchester United. And as we've just seen, one enough for Villa to get back to winning ways at St Mary's. Four more games to come your way on Sunday, including the champions Liverpool going to West Ham and Spurs finishing uh, the match week away at Brighton. So Villa are nudging their way back up the table. 32 points, eighth position. They still have a game in hand on the likes of West Ham, Liverpool and Leicester as well. They've gone above Arsenal after their point earlier in the day against Manchester United. Thomas Tuchel's Chelsea win tomorrow. They go back above them and level on points with seventh place Everton. Southampton in 11th, but uh, still in very good shape, as we said. At half way stage, their second best uh, points tally, tally in the Premier League. Just in terms of the bottom, Fulham, of course, drawing with West Brom. West Brom on 12.6 from safety. Fulham four now behind Brighton. And crucially for Newcastle, they've edged four clear of Graham Potter's side.